2021 was a year that held some of my favorite reptile encounters I've ever had in my entire life. While this may be true, the amphibians this year were also nothing to be underestimated. In 2021, I saw a vast assortment of different amphibians, some of which I'd seen before, others of which I had not, that all served as perfect reminders for why I love this group of animals so much. While all of the amphibians that I found in 2021 were an absolute joy to see, there was without a doubt one that stood apart from the rest. This was not just any ordinary amphibian. This is an amphibian that I first learned about when I was only nine years old when I took my very first trip to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This is an amphibian that I knew existed right there in the park with me throughout all of the years that I would visit. And while I was already in the process of finding tons of the amazing and unique salamanders that called this place home, something in my head convinced me that no matter how many I would end up finding, I would never end up having the opportunity to see the king of all of them in real life. Well, little did I know that over a decade later, the perfect opportunity to witness one of these animals in the wild for the first time would be put right in front of me. And little did I know that the inner nine-year-old that had been hiding deep inside of me for all of those years was about to be brought back to life in the best way possible. I was about to see an animal that up to that point I had only dreamed of seeing. I was about to see a wild eastern hellbender. With that, I hope you all enjoy the video I made of this absolutely amazing and unforgettable day. The day started out with a good friend of mine, Zach Davis, and I meeting up with a buddy of ours named Andrew Jones. Now, Andrew has been getting to know these salamanders extremely well for years and was gracious enough to take us along on one of his outings. He knows how to find these things better than and with less effort than any other human I know of. And amazingly, he doesn't do it by flipping giant underwater rocks or by going out at night with a flashlight. All Andrew needs to find them is an extensive knowledge on the animal's behavior in this area and an extremely good eye for spotting their shape in the water. And he does this by looking in the water while either wading or snorkeling. And with that, we had our work cut out for us. I don't think this video would be complete without a classic Appalachian Mountain snorkeling montage. So here's a quick glimpse at some of the amazing animals that we saw while looking for these salamanders. Just like that, 
it happened. My very first Eastern Hellbender. I'm simply going to let this moment speak for itself. If only there was a way for this animal to understand the sheer amount of childlike joy that it brought upon me. It's a well-known fact to anyone that's involved in herpetology that the eastern hellbender is the largest species of salamander in North America. The record length for this species is around 29 inches, but even just the average length of this salamander is around a foot and a half. This particular individual was at least that, and maybe even some change. Even Andrew, who keep in mind had seen dozens of these things up to that point, was saying that this was a large individual for that area. So not only was my first hellbender an absolutely gorgeous one, but it was also an animal whose size perfectly demonstrated the reputation of this species. It was absolutely everything I could have asked for and more. And before I knew it, this incredible animal drifted away, never to be seen by me again. And then an absolutely gargantuanly, look at the size of this ring neck snake. And before we knew it, we were on to our second hellbender of the day. This species is scientifically known as Cryptobranchus alleghaniensis. However, there are actually two different subspecies within this species, the eastern only being one of them. The other subspecies of hellbender lives hundreds of miles away west of the Mississippi River and is known as the Ozark hellbender. Now one of the many things that both of these salamanders have in common is their conservation status. The eastern hellbender is endangered in most of the states that it lives, and the Ozark hellbender is actually a federally endangered species. This is why you'll notice that none of us in this video are picking up any of these salamanders like we would with many others. One of the big reasons these salamanders have become so endangered in most places is because of their hypersensitivity to their habitat being altered by either pollution or sedimentation. This is a problem that hopefully this guy, nor the next hellbender we would find this day, will ever have to deal with. On a side note, can you spot this next hellbender? I certainly couldn't. Their camouflage is phenomenal and perfectly conceals them amongst the rocks that they sit by. Anyway, back on the topic of their habitat being altered. This is an especially big issue for this species of salamander because they pretty much only live in high elevation rivers and streams with fast moving, shallow, cold, and highly oxygenated water. Let's just put it this way, this is never a salamander that you are going to see in a river like the Mississippi. One of the biggest reasons that hellbenders are so vulnerable to siltation and pollution is because they obtain oxygen almost exclusively cutaneously. Essentially what that means is that all of the oxygen that is flowing through the water travels through their skin and into their system. They do in fact have internal lungs like many other animals do, except they've been reduced to such a small size that they're now known as vestigial, essentially meaning that they're useless to them. Check out this next hellbender we found that day. You'll notice that this individual is far smaller and far paler than all of the others we had found up to that point. This just goes to showcase the incredible diversity in appearance that these salamanders exhibit. On these salamanders, you'll notice tons of little wrinkles on the side of their body. These wrinkles are where these salamanders obtain most of their oxygen from. And the fact that they're loose and flap around with the current of the water means that they have an increased surface area to obtain oxygen from their environment. This is also what has earned them the popular nickname lasagna lizard. And here it is, the fifth and final hellbender of the day. Out of all of the hellbenders we found this day, this individual was located by far in the slowest water out of all of them. So this is the fifth, fifth one, right? Yeah. This is the fifth hellbender we have seen today. The fifth big one. You'll notice that all of the hellbenders we found this day were in the water itself. 
This may make you wonder whether or not you can find these salamanders in other places than the water like you would with many others. Where these salamanders exclusively live is one of the many things that sets them apart from a lot of the United States salamanders. They're actually a fully aquatic salamander, meaning that you will never find one of these when you're flipping logs in the forest. Their entire life cycle, from egg to larvae to adult, is spent in the water and amongst and underneath the large smooth rocks that these salamanders use as shelter and nesting sites. This is precisely why you will see many signs in Hellbender Habitat telling you not to stack rocks for fun, because in turn you would be destroying the refugia and nesting sites for these salamanders as well as many other potentially endangered organisms. So it may be tempting, but please do not do it. And before I knew it, my time sharing space with these incredible animals that I had dreamed of seeing since I was only a kid came to a close. I hope the contents of this video were at least a fraction as special for y'all to see as it was for me to experience them. And with that, I'll see y'all on the next video. And by the way, keep your eye out for it because it's one that I've been waiting to post for a very long time.